Now, in 1984, Nottingham Forest were the victims of match fixing. Brussels side and Alecht paid the referee ahead of the two sides clash in the semi final of the UEFA Cup. That is an established fact. Well, now Inside Out has uncovered fresh evidence showing UEFA and the Belgian football authorities knew about the bribe before it hit the headlines. Forest fan Al Needham has been investigating. The trophy at the moment, whooping John McGuffin. Gary Bertels, the discovery of the season. Whoa. If you were a Forest fan like me in 1979 and 1980, life didn't get much better than this. Everybody wanted an English club to win the European Cup, and that was one of the things that kept us going. But there could have been a third European trophy for Forest in 1984, but they never made it past the semi-final of the UEFA Cup. They lost to Belgian side Anderlecht and a referee that was bent as a nine-bob note. No, really, he was. And I'm not the only one who's still furious about it. The whole thing stinks. It's crooked. When it's brought up, it, it rankles, I think, still. I think players should be compensated. Yeah, you say it's not about money, it's not about... I think it's about everything. I think it's about getting cheated. I think it's about uh, the earnings that players could have made. At the time, the players thought the ref was having a shocker. The truth was far worse, though. 13 years after that match, it was revealed that Anderlecht Football Club had paid a middleman the equivalent of £18,000 to pass on to the referee. Vandenberg, the player that everybody applauds. Now then, if this had happened to Man U or Liverpool, the media would have been all over it. But it's pretty much the football scandal that time forgot. So I'm going to Brussels to get at the truth. I've had plenty of time on the train to ponder what happened. Forrest were in a strong position. They'd already beaten Anderlecht 2-0 at the city ground. Now they had to play him in Brussels. For me, it was building up that the referee was cheating. And I tried to explain that to you because all 50-50 balls around our uh, 80 yard box, you know, he blew the whistle and gave a free kick uh, uh, to Anderlecht. With Forrest already 1-0 down, this happened. Referee right on the spot, had no hesitation in giving the penalty. The penalty was just the most embarrassing decision I think I've ever seen in football. The distance between uh, Kenny Swain and their guy who went down was just absolutely ridiculous. I've never seen anything like it. The ball from Van der Leiken, taken on the chest of Vandenberg. Forrest Knight got even worse when Erwin Vandenberg made it 3-0. Yet even then, all Forrest needed was one away goal. The footage of what happened next is very hard to find, but now I'm in Brussels, I know where to find it. OK, here I am at VRT, which is it's the Flemish version of the BBC, if you will, and I'm here to talk to a documentary maker who uh, is a bit well known in these parts for putting the cat amongst the pigeons. He did a documentary in 1997 about the Anderlecht Forest game. And he's got the rare footage of Paul Hart's disallowed goal in the dying seconds. OK, well, here's the goal. Yeah. Well, what What's wrong with that? Here? I just bang, banged it down into the ground. And it, I remember it flying past Ian Boyer and into the back of the net. Clean as a whistle. No question it was a goal. There's Can, no offside, no. there's no push. No. But still, it's disallowed. Then the whistle came. It just, it just shell shot. Yeah. So, thanks to Frank, we pretty much now know what happened. That the club bribed a Spanish referee to throw the game. And the money came from this man. Club president Constant van den Stock. But he wasn't about to pay the money himself. So he used this man, a local gangster called Jean Elst, to do the dirty deal. So Elst uh, contacted a friend of his in the region, went to Alicante, spoke to the referee, and the referee said, OK, I'll do it for 1.2 million Belgian francs. But the story gets murkier because afterwards, Jean Al's house was broken into by this man, a criminal called René van Arken. 
Van Auken stole evidence that the match had been fixed and used it to blackmail Anderlecht for years. And when the club stopped making payments, he blew the whistle. In 1990 and 1992, he posted the evidence to the Belgian FA's president, Michel de Hoog, including a transcript of a secret recording of Anderlecht's president, Payne Oshmone, and the diary account of middleman John Els outlining what he'd done. But hang on, how come we never found out about this bribe until five years later when Anderlecht came clean? There was a meeting between the Belgian FA and the blackmailer in January of 1993 that's in a letter from their solicitors. But the dossier was passed around and amazingly, nothing happened. If you receive something like this, a bunch of documents on possible uh, games that are tampered with, you should investigate it yes. as a football association. The former Belgian FA president has told us he passed the dossier on to his Secretary General. He then passed it on to UEFA because he said Belgian law at the time didn't allow him to investigate corruption. We tried to find out why UEFA had waited five years to investigate the dossier. They wouldn't tell us, but they did point out that they thoroughly investigated the case in 1997 when they interviewed the people involved. It's this silence and inaction that hurts the former players the most. It's wrong, it was wrong then, it's wrong now, and it'll always be wrong. You look at the cricket, players were, you know, were bribed, you know, for doing, um, stepping over the mark, you know, with the no balls. They were banned. Cricket went straight out, right, you're banned. Five year bans or whatever, lifetime bans. That's right, if you don't do that, people are gonna still do it and think they can get away with it. And elect, I have no, uh, affection, no good words to say about that football club whatsoever. If you do that in that kind of way, you can't talk about fair play at all. Cheating John Elst and Rene Van Arken were jailed. Van Arken's conviction was overturned in the appeal court three years later, by which point Elst had passed away. But never mind them. I want to know what the Anderlecht fans think about it. What, what would you say? Sorry or what? <laughs> <laughs> that's history. Stay positive. Stay, yeah. stay positive. We, we don't have to say sorry, but but the club has to say sorry for, for yeah. it. Uh, we, we were not involved in it. We were not that's responsible. Right. But sorry for it and sorry for those people. I've done what I should have done in the first place. I've spoken to the fans and I've realised that they were robbed just as badly as we were. You know, one of the great achievements of their history was taken away from them just as much as one of the greatest of ours was. I can't be angry with them. Give me that ear. And that, my friends, is football.